Hi, this is Flower Design by Luann. I own a company called Wedding Flowers, Inc. And I'm going to show you how to make a traditional cascade bouquet. I am going to use roses. And for the first step, you need to choose a bouquet holder. I use the Quality Foam Holders by Oasis. Slanted holders are for cascades. And the straight handle holders are made for round or even a mock hand tie that will give that needed nourishment of water for those fresh flowers. You also have the option of the European bouquet holders. These have a much larger surface of foam and you can see they can handle the bigger stem flowers such as peonies, hydrangeas, sunflowers, or just a lot of quality of stems. You can see the comparison between the round European holder and the large grand bell holder. There is a much larger surface. If you'd like your bouquet holders to actually be part of the design, you may choose one of the elegant bouquet holders by Oasis. They look like metal. They are actually a high impact plastic. They come in three different designs and they are all available in either gold or silver finish. Step two is to soak the bouquet holder in water treated with a quality flower food. On my store, I have Crystal Clear. It has all the directions on the back of the bottle of the amounts needed. Step three is to secure the holder in either a weighted vase or in a bouquet stand. This is very important because as you design the bouquet, you'll find that it will get heavier and it could easily topple forward and bruise your flowers or even break off your flower heads if it should hit the surface hard enough. Now in step four, I'm going to introduce you to a lot of different mixed foliages. One of the things that makes professional design so beautiful is the mixture of different greenery. This first greenery is called Italian Ruscus. This is what a grower's bunch looks like. It's very beautiful, it's lush, and a single stem can do one bouquet. It has lots of laterals on it and it can be easily cut apart with a sharp florist's knife. Making a clean cut with my knife, I begin by inserting the laterals into the outer perimeter of the bouquet holder. This is step five and is called framing in the cascade shape. As you insert this greener around, remember the length of the greens is going to determine the final size of your bouquet. Now these have very slender stems. They insert easily into the wet foam and you just make a clean cut with your knife each time. Now this greenery is just framing in so that you don't want to fill it in real thick. You want to keep some open space in that foam because you're going to have a lot of flowers and other greenery stems to put into this foam head. I add longer laterals down towards the bottom so that it creates the shape of my cascade. Stagger the lengths of the ones on the bottom just to add a little bit more interest to your final design. The next greenery I'm going to show in step six is called Fossia leaves. These are a tropical greenery. Here is a single grower's bunch. They come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And believe it or not, this is actually considered to be the small. Now I'm going to do a little creative work with this greenery and I'm actually going to cut off part of the laterals and you can see here that I've trimmed off away and I'm going to insert this big portion of the leaf down to the bottom of the cascade. You can see where I've outlined where I've cut the one leaf off but I'm going to take and trim that leaf and give it a sharp point so that I can now insert it into the top of the bouquet as well. Designers are often creative in this way to balance out the bouquet and use the leaves in creative ways. Step seven is variegated pittosporum. This is actually one of my favorite greeneries. It is available all year round and here shown is a single grower's bunch. So many wholesale places make you buy huge quantities of every flower variety, but using a mixture like this you should buy them by the single bunches because you get a lot more mileage out of your flower design that way. You can see I've cut off one small portion 
it has a light, pleasant scent to it, and I'm going to insert this pittosporum leaf in towards the top left-hand side of the bouquet. Step eight is introducing to you variegated lily grass. Beautiful. This kind of grass comes in both a variegated form and in a solid green. The variegated has some striping of white in it. Whenever I use a lily grass, I like to give it a bath first in some tepid water and let it absorb the moisture. You can see that the grass is very long, it's flexible, but it's sturdy enough that it can be pushed by itself into the foam and hold very easily. With this grass, I make two cuts, one at the top and one at the bottom, and you can see how I've created beautiful loops at the top right-hand side of this bouquet. Looping grass is a beautiful way to add some texture and interest to a bouquet. You can see the bouquet is beginning to take shape just with the greeneries I've added so far. Step nine is one of my favorite foliages. This is called Salau Tips. It's also commonly known as Lemon Leaf. One grower's bunch has quite a bit of leaves in it and you can use it from everything from bouquets and corsages to boutonnieres. Here is a single stem and I cut them apart with my knife or you can use bigger branch cutters for the heavier leaves. I'm just going to insert these at random. I'm not trying to overpower my other granaries. I'm using small laterals at a time and just inserting some greens here or there. Again, I don't want to overfill this bouquet because I need a lot of foam space left so that I can insert all of my roses later. Right now, I'm just doing a light filling in with greenery. You can see that single bunches of foliage can get a lot of mileage out for several bouquets, including corsages and boutonnieres. You rarely need 10 or 15 bunches of every greenery variety to use them for a common sized wedding. Here's my last insertion, and now I'm ready to go on to my next foliage. My next greenery is going to introduce you to tree fern. Now this here is just one single grower's bunch of tree fern. You get a lot of mileage out of this greenery, but you don't want to overpower your bouquets with it. As you can see, the stems are very long, but they're very bushy and they can quickly overpower a bouquet. You don't want it to look hairy when you get done. So I'm just going to cut a few sprigs of laterals off of the single stem and I'm going to insert them different places in the bouquet just to give a lot of texture change and a lot of contrast in color. This tree fern is also wonderful to give a light look into your bouquets and boutonnieres as well. Reserve a lot of your leaves aside for your bridesmaids or your attendant bouquets or for your corsage and boutonniere work. Now you can begin to see how this is fill quickly filling in towards the center of the bouquet. Now I'm going to add one more long length look to the cascade. In step 11, I'm going to add more of the variegated lily grass to the cascade. The lengths of the lily grass are very long. They have a nice wavy texture and when you pick them up and gather them together, you'll see that there is a lot of movement to them. This is going to add more interest at the bottom of the bouquet. I'm going to actually create a waterfall effect. I cut the blades of grass off sharply and push them up into the foam. And then I allow those long blades of grass to flow over top of the other foliages that form the cascade. Step 12 introduces leather leaf fern. This is a very common foliage that is used in flower shops all across the country. A grower's bunch is very large and very affordable. It's wise to order extra bunches of this greenery to help fill in if you should need more somewhere. I'm cutting off little laterals and putting them in towards the center and I'm going to add in some towards the back as well. The different greeneries are adding a lot of color, a lot of shape, and a lot of design. Step 13, I'm going to just fill in the center with some of the greens that we've already used. You can put in some pittosporum, some more leather leaf, or whatever leaves that you would like to use. 
Step 14 is boxwood. This also comes in variegated or solid green. I have the solid green here. You commonly see this as hedges. They're very compact, they're dense, and the leaves are very small. But the individual leaves, because they're small, contrast nicely against the larger salal leaves and even the large fascia leaves. So it's not only the textures, but it's the size of the different leaves that adds so much interest into this design. The bouquet is almost totally filled in now, and I am going to show you a close-up of where I put in some of this extra boxwood stems, as indicated by the red lines on the picture. Now that the bouquet is completely greened in, I'm going to give you a close-up first so that you can see how the varieties contrast against each other. I like the way the pittosporum in the center, the variegated, really pops out and gives you a spark of color in the middle. A back view shows you all the different kinds and varieties and the interest that they add to the design. A side view shows you that this is not flattened. This is very dimensional and it's very well put together from all sides. You want to angle your greenery from the center outward. And to give you the idea, think of how a plant grows, like a fern. As pictured here, it starts out and it flows outward to the center and faces backward. The side from the left also shows you it's not a flat bouquet, but it has a lot of depth and dimension to it. The last step to greening a bouquet is the leaf polish. This spray removes the water spots, it removes pollen dust, and it leaves the leaves very glossy and green. You get a lot of spraying powder out of one can, and you can also use this for live plants in your home later. You can see it gives a very glossy finish. It dries very quickly. Spray this on the greenery only. At step 16, we're ready to begin adding our flowers to the design. I'm going to use short stemmed roses. These are 40 centimeter heads, which are a little smaller, and I remove all the thorns so they don't tear up the foam as you insert them. If you have damaged outer petals, just simply remove them. These are called guard petals and they are left on on purpose at the farm to protect the inner rows. Just remove them by peeling them off and snapping them off the rows. The roses should feel firm to the touch and they should not be blemished in any way when you put them into your bouquet. I just continue to peel down until I am satisfied that the rose is ready to put into my design. Now remember this is a lot of roses. You don't want to insert the stems so deeply into the foam that the stems begin to collide. So if you go in very deeply you'll see how the stems begin knocking against each other. Instead you want to insert the stems about an inch to an inch and a half just so they're well seated into the foam. The length of your outer row stems are going to determine the overall diameter of your final bouquet design. What this means is if you want a bigger bouquet, keep the stems longer. If you want a smaller, more compact bouquet, keep the stems shorter. I begin by inserting the first rows at the top, and I'm going to work my way around the outer perimeter of the bouquet. Now you'll notice that I've extended the rose heads just beyond the greenery. This is because the roses are the focal point of the bouquet. You don't want to overpower your greenery or you don't want to fill in so full of roses that you can't see the greenery because it is part of the design and that is the point of using so many different interesting foliages. I just work my way around the outer edge. These flower heads are at a complete 90 degree angle to the center of the bouquet and facing outward. As you notice, as I insert down towards the bottom, the stems are getting a little, little longer because this is a cascade. I do want to stagger the lengths as I go down. My final rose is going to be the longest and it's going to insert directly straight up into the bouquet holder. Once I finish the outer frame of my bouquet, I want you to take a look at the shape that the flower heads create they become an oval shape. Now this doesn't have to be a perfect oval, but this just gives you a guideline of what a traditional cascade looks like. 
these are where the flower heads usually meet. Don't keep it too perfect because flowers need to look natural. Step 17, I'm going to begin inserting the inner flowers and we will insert at the V point. The V point is where you see the two outer flowers form a V and where that V meets is where you insert the inner flower. These inner flowers are a little shorter stem. They're going to get shorter as you move in more and more to the center of the bouquet. And you'll notice that I stagger the heads of the flowers and the way they face. The first one's face down and the next one faces up and outward. Again, I always just keep a mental image of where the V of the two outer flowers meets and that's where my insertion point is for my next rose. You can begin to visualize these blank spots in your design as you begin to do this a little bit more. This bouquet is actually very quick to make. I know it's a little nerve-wracking to do it in the beginning, but you'll be, find out this just becomes a second nature to look for the next open space for the next rose. Again, visualize the V, keep the stem a little shorter than the outer flowers, and just work your way around the perimeter. My very center rose has the shortest stem of all, it's inserted straight into the foam, right in the middle, and it's straighted face outward. My next rose, I'm going to put that in that open spot down on the right, and I'm facing it downward. And you will begin to note that these center roses begin to form like a triangle shape. Not a perfect triangle, but you can still see how they kind of relate to each other, and how the flower heads really face in different directions. I did decide to stagger one more rose length down at the very bottom to give a little bit longer length to my bottom cascade. Now let's take a final close-up look at where we're at so far. The flower heads in relation to each other are fairly even spacing and the roses form triangles from one flower head to the next. Just kind of draw a visual as you draw lines from one rose head to the other and you'll see the form of the triangles. The directions of which the head of the flowers faces is important. The center flowers should face forward and the side flowers begin facing outward. So this way your bouquet looks dimensional and it also looks good from all angles. Remember a bridal bouquet isn't just viewed from the front but it is also viewed by the guests that are sitting in the side aisles as the bride goes down the bridal procession. So we want to visualize these spaces in between the flowers and make sure they kind of keep an even spacing. Now I could insert secondary flowers, a totally different flower if I want, and they would go in the spaces like I have marked here that come off from the original one. I want to insert more flowers and I'm just going to use more roses, but I'm going to tuck these secondary roses in a little deeper. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to create more dimension in this bouquet and I don't want all the lengths of the flowers to be the same. So remember, if you're going to insert the secondary flowers, which can be a different variety, you go in between the already placed flowers and you just insert these a little deeper into the design. So I visualize my open spaces and I decide where my next flowers are going to go. Now I'm going to continue to use roses, but I'm going to insert, cut the stems a little shorter and I'm going to insert these roses just a little deeper. And again, I'm just showing you where some open spots are between the flowers that are already there. Now if you decide that you want a longer cascade, you would merely add longer roses to the bottom of the flower design. Remember not to overpower your bride, however. You have to take her dress and her height into consideration on how long you want the final cascade to be. Now let's take a moment to look at our traditional cascade. This is one flower only. You can use a mixture of flowers if you'd like. You can see that the longer roses at the bottom form a traditional cascade. And if you take a good look from both the right side and from the left side, you can see well placement. 
can see a lot of interesting foliage still, and you can see the placement from the left is also well designed and that it looks very dimensional. The view from the front is a very traditional cascade and would be a pride for any bride to carry down the aisle. But I want to move on and show you some other steps that you can do to create a little bit more interest to this traditional rose cascade. Now step 18 shows us an option of adding filler flower or other kinds of varieties of flowers. Although a traditional filler flower is baby's breath, I'm going to show you with this one. It's called wax flower. Now with filler flower, I usually cut it a little short. I insert clumps of it in between the focal flower, which in this case is the roses. And you want to be careful not to overpower your bouquet with too much filler. Remember, the greenery in the focal flowers is a part of the design, so you don't want to crowd it out and take over with any one type of flower. First and foremost, the roses should be seen. You can see how I have to lengthen the stem down in the cascade so it peeks out between the rose heads, and I have to lengthen it on the outer portion of the bouquet as well. So my main emphasis is to keep any filler flower light, uh, keep it shorter than the focal flower, and tuck it in between the main bloom heads. By putting insertions a little deeper, you add more depth and more interest to the bouquet. Here's a view from both sides. It takes very little filler flower. One bunch can do several bouquets. That's why other wholesale places insisting that you buy five to ten bunches of one variety is a little overwhelming. You can see now it's all filled in, a little longer from the sides. Now, let's take a look at our design in the two different ways that we did it. Here's the first completed design where we added the filler flower. Nice contrast, not such so many color changes that it's too obvious, but it adds a little shading and a little color from all the sides. The greenery shows up well, and the contrast in color is nice. Now, let's go back and take a look at our cascade complete without the filler flower. And then you'll have a little bit more of the old-fashioned design that allows the greenery to show and be more of a complement. Again, two different looks, but so easy to make. It's the same design, just a little different look. Step 19 is pretty important. This means you lock the stems into place with a floral lock bouquet adhesive. It comes in a small can. You have to shake it really hard and quite a while to make sure you very irrigate it. You insert the stemmed nozzle up into the spray nozzle because it will get glue all over your flowers otherwise. Make sure it's inserted tightly so that it doesn't come loose while you're spraying. And then the length of the nozzle is so that you can insert it deep into the flower heads to where it's very close to the surface of the foam and to where the flower stems are inserted into the foam. Press the nozzle quickly just to give short burst of the adhesive right at the stem insertions. The last step is to mist your flower designs with a quality flower sealant. I use Finishing Touch. You can also use Crowning Glory. Both of these work well for home designs because air conditioning or home refrigerators pull moisture out of the air. This will lock that moisture into your petals and not allow that moisture to be pulled out, which shortens the life of your flowers. If you'd like to read the more detailed instructions for this bouquet, you can find it in the link below at WeddingFlowersInc.com. You'll also find many other flower tutorials as well for bouquets, corsages, boutonnieres, centerpieces, and reception decor. Please check out all of my designs. You'll find them again at WeddingFlowerInc.com. Thank you.